Take a look at this. This is a mock-up of an unequal intersecting pitch roof. You can see that there's a shallow pitch and a steep pitch that have a consistent rise. There's a hip raptor with a double cheek cut, inconsistent double cheek cut, seat cut, and backing angles on it. You'll note the backing angle is plain in. So if they were square, the center line, you could just scribe it with your pencil and mark it and cut it. It sits right here on the corner and it's drawn out. You can see this is a miter ruler. The way this works, this is the corner of the building saying this was a standard roof. You'd have two pitches that were the same. And they emanate from the plate line at 90 degrees in plan view. They come up, common rafters, and they crash in midair. Right side and left side would be the same pitch, like I said. If you projected the line down, it would bisect the corner. And this could be a dog leg, it wouldn't matter. If the right side and the left side were the same, it would bisect the corner. But unequal intersecting pitches are different. They're running at different angles. So where they crash in midair, when you project it down, it won't bisect the corner. So that's the difference. It creates a rectangle. Standard miter rule, ruler would be square. This is a rectangular miter ruler. And the way you get one of these is really important. It has many elements that you need, all the elements you need to cut a roof. The shallow pitch is always 12 inches. The steep pitch is what the steep pitch ends up being when you create it. Just to go over the things that it has, it has the jack side cut angles or cheek cuts, whichever you prefer angles, both the steep and the, the shallow. So the steep side cut, cut, I mean the steep common rafter has the shallow side cut, the shallow common rafter has the steep side cut, right? The hip itself has side cuts, top and bottom. There's also setbacks, right? You have to know how to achieve this angle without compromising its length. So the length of the rafter is from point to center line to point of center line. And you have to draw a, long, a line along the side of this called the set back and set forward. The top is a set back towards the center, the bottom is set forward. They mean the same thing, essentially lines that are plumb, plumb lines that you can run your saw through at the appropriate angle that you get from the miter ruler to give you your length. So this is the key to the lengths and the angles of every rafter in the roof. So I'm a roof framing teacher and building this model, it's in behind you already built. And you can see that there's shallow pitch and a steep pitch over here. And you can see the converging hips and valleys, right? So the span of this one is, is, is 45 inches. The run is span less ridge divided in half, right? 45 minus inch and a half divided by divided in half is 21 and three quarters is the, is the run of this common rafter. But we're gonna need to know the run of this common rafter and how to achieve the jack length on this side of the hip, the shallow side and the steep side by using the plate line dimensions or the on center spacing. How are we gonna do that with the standard roof the plate line dimension is the same as the run, but with a non-standard like this, the irregular roof, they're different. How are we going to do that? And it has to do with the ratios of the sides of the miter ruler, right? So let's just start out talking about how to get it. It's an average. You're averaging the two pitches, and we generally use division to average. So five divided by 12 or 512 divided by 912. And you can just drop the, the denominators and divide the numerators by each other. So five divided by 12, uh, uh, I'm sorry, five divided by nine times 12 will give you the short leg because you have the long leg. Or you could take a framing square, slide it over to nine inches and draw five inches. So you have nine, five, run a line through it, run it wild, and then slide your frame of square over to 12 inches, and then grab it and 
You're left with 6.66 out here. So this miter ruler is 12, 6.66. That means the run of the shallow pitch is 12 inches, always. And the run of the steep pitch varies. In this case, it's 6.66. Why is the run on a miter rule, why is the run of the, com, uh, the shallow pitch always 12 inches? I mean, that, that is because we're trying to make this as small as humanly possible so we don't have to take extra steps with the math to calculate lengths of things, right? If I were to make the steep pitch 12 inches, the shallow pitch would be really long, right? We'd, we'd have to divide, you know, make it smaller. So it has to be small as humanly possible without compromising 12 inches of run because 12 inches of run is the language of, of the root, 5, 12, 6, 12, 7, 12. So we have to have the shallow pitch be have 12 inches because the hip rafter follows suit. And here's how. There's a language of roof framing that's six to 800 years old, and we have to learn at least how to read it elementary in order to advance. And what it is, it's, it's essentially taking, you can see these are the three rafter planes, right? These are vertical planes, and there's three vertical planes on this and a horizontal plane. Plywood planes will be called inclined planes, right? But in this case, we're not dealing with those. We're dealing with these three vertical planes and a horizontal plane. The, the language is, Elevations laid on top of plan in one drawing so you can understand what's going on. Sometimes you'll see a radius point and an arc swung between the rises telling you that all three of these rises are consistent and you'll see there's three different runs and you'll know immediately what that means. Have a drawing of one here. Here's a drawing of one, right? This is a dog leg situation, unequal intersecting pitch on a dog leg. The triangles are laid down flat. You can see the three consistent rises, right? That's how that would look. It's important to understand that, to, under, to achieve this lengths and angles. So this is the key to the lengths and angles of all the rafters in the roof, like I said. So how do I, you get the secant or line length ratio for the common rafters, rise, run, hypotenuse divided by 12. So you divide the hypotenuse by 12, gives you the secant, you multiply it by the run, gives you the rafter length. Now remember runs, are common rafter runs emanate from the plate line at 90 degrees in plan view, that's really important. That is the definition of a common rafter, essentially. If they were to emanate from any other angle, the spine of the top of the rafter would be, wouldn't be in plane to the plywood, right? It'd have, like, be like a hip rafter, it would twist. It has to be flat. So in order to get that, also, it's the shortest distance between two points, essentially planes, right? If it went at an angle, it would take longer to get there. You'd have a side cut at the top and the bottom and it would be considered a hip or a valley. So that's the definition of a common rafter. It's really important in this case. It's the common rafter run, which means on the level that we're multiplying the hip rafter secant by to get its length. This is the 512 pitch side, 12 square plus five square, the square root of which is 13. We divide it by 12, 1.083, that's the secant for the 512 side. 912, same thing, 12 inches, squared plus nine inches squared, the square root of which is 15 inches, divided by 12, to put it in inches is 1.25, so one inch and a quarter of an inch, which is neat, right? That's because 15 is one foot and a quarter of a foot, right? So the leftover is three inches, which is a quarter of a foot, so same with an inch, right? We've, we're given two lengths and we're, we had to find the third and divide it by 12. We were given 12 and we are given five. If the hip rafter is kind of like in 3D, if you will, not technically, but you, 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 the first two lengths are given and you have to find the third. That is to say, we're given it because we created a miter rule 
ruler, 12, 6.66, and the hypotenuse, right? And we can do that. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Once we have this hypotenuse, we square it plus 5 rai squared equals the hypotenuse again. So we can do that. We can go, let me just do it here, 6.66 squared plus 12 squared equals the square root of, and that gives us 13.72. That's still on the level. Still, that's just this length here, 13.72, right? But I have to square that squared plus the five rise, five squared equals, and then the square root of that is 14.6, which is the length of this one here. So 14.6 and some change, 14.6. But that is foot and in, feet and inches, right? One foot, two, five eighths or something, right? We have to divide that by 12 to put it in inches and parts of an inch. So divided by 12. And the, the secant for the hip is 1.217. Write that number down. Everything should be written down. One side should be a column of all the information about the rafters of that roof. You know, uh, the line length ratio or the secant of the common, the secant of the or line length ratio is another term for a secant of the, the hips, the rise ratio of the common, you know, the pitch of the roof, the type of the rafter, the plumb cut, the seat cut, the heel stand, the, 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 uh, the uh, heel cut, all of those things, you'll need all of that, those elements. And then on the other side, all the spans, you take the, mat, the information on one side and you multiply it by the information on the other to get all the rafter lengths and then you write all those down so it's like a little cutting list you have for yourself but you have to get all the secants first we know this is 1.083 we know this is 1.25 now we know this one here is 1.217 we know that the thickness is this is three by four by the way this hip is two and a half inches so half of it's inch and a quarter and we want to know how to find the setback lines so there's setbacks and set forwards, which are essentially the same things, just in different locations. Setbacks on the top, set forwards are on the bottom. Those lines are the parallel lines to the plumb cuts. Remember, the lengths of the rafters are the points, the center line, but the cutting has to start on the side. It has to be the correct angle, so your saw blade will come out at the point, right? With irregular, you have two different setbacks. With standard rafters, uh, roofs, I mean, your setback on either side is the same but they, they vary on this. So you have to know a thing or two about this triangle. And there's two other numbers you need to know, and that's the side, the ratio of the sides to each other, because you're gonna use them time and time again to find the different runs. Rafters. Here, we talked about the span being pretty obvious, but how to get this rafter here based on the span minus the ridge thickness gives you the run of the low pitch multiplied by the 1.083 will give you the rafter length, right? How do you get this rafter length? We know the secret, but we don't know the run, right? So all that you do is you take that rafter length here and you, you multiply it by the ratio of the sides and then it'll give you the run. If you mark the run on either side of the plate, that'll be the ridge length, right? Because you can see that the common rafter runs up to the ridge, runs along and then drops back down. So the run here, it's going to determine the ridge length. That's important. How do you, what are the ratios of the sides? And the ad is, this is really important for an unequal intersecting pitch roof. That is 9 divided by 5 and 5 divided by 9. And we're going to use that for the runs of the jack rafters, given our onset of spacing on the plate. We don't know the runs to this on the level before we calculate, you know, common differences we're going to use it for. The side cut setbacks for both the common rafters and so forth and so on. And it is, the, the numbers are 5 divided by 9 is 0.55 and 9 divided by 5 is 1.8. Those are the two numbers. So how are we going to use it to find the deductions, and setbacks and deductions for our hip rafter? And the answer is we're going to use the thickness of the hip rafter, 2 and a half inches, half an inch and a quarter because everything's from the side to the center lines, so or even a half of it, times those two numbers, because we're dealing with plan view, and this little triangle here is the same as this large triangle, right? 
So obviously the 1.8 side is the bigger side. The other one is 0.55. So this steep angle here, which we can get from a T-bevel on our set, or we can do the math with the same ratio. Uh, 1.8 times inch and a quarter, half the thickness, gives us two and two, two and a quarter. That's the setback for the for the, the steep side. You use that on this side and on this side and the bottom, um, the, the, the shallow of the side cuts or steep uh, cheek cuts, you'd, you'd 0.55, you use 0.55 times inch and a quarter and that would give you 0 0.69, 0 0.7, almost three quarters of an inch. By the way, what's this business about fractions and decimals. And if you want to know what 5 eighths is, you just go 5 divided by 8 on the calculator equals and it'll go, it'll tell you 0.625. And you can learn that in an hour if you wanted to, but there's a fast way to remember. It used to be a coin called a bit. It's half a quarter, 12 and a half cents. If you move the decimal, it's an eighth of a dollar because uh, Americans are obsessed with eighths, right? So they had an eighth of a dollar. Everything else is in tenths, right? Which is already decimals, right? 0 0.5 is 50 cents, point, you know, 25 cents is 0.25, 75 cents, right, is, is 0.75. You already know that. You deal with that every day. 0 0.10 is 10, you know, uh, right, obviously. Um, but 12 and a half cents is important because if you add 12 and a half cents to a quarter, you get 37 and a half cents or 0.375, which is five, uh, three eighths, right? An eighth more than a quarter. An eighth more than a half, 50 cents plus 12 and a half cents is 62 and a half cents, 0.625, that's five eighths. 75 cents plus 12 and a half cents, you know, 75, 87 and a half cents, 0.875, that's seven eighths. That's, that takes, you could memorize that while watching football, you know, it, that's easy. And, you know, uh, 0.06 is half of 12 and a half cents if you wanted to go to 16th, or you could say minus or plus, you know. I'm at the point where I just make everything 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. So I've used this calculator for so long, uh, my brain translates for me. It's good to know, though, because you'll be dealing with this all the time. I, I feel like, and I would never disarm someone from the tools if they use a construction master by no means but you can't know too much about what you're doing and I feel like it's a little bit like a credit card compared to cash or once removed you know which was once removed from gold you're getting further and further away from the actual mathematics which is important and by the way there's a lot of stigma it's simple it's not difficult so anyway, ratios of the sides really important so I said 1.8 so I just gave you the set back and the set forward to run your saw through. How do you find your angles? You can get it from the miter ruler with your with your square. You can get it with your square, or you know there's a there's a, the tangent function in this second tangent will give you the angle in degrees, which is not math. It's a graph that's put in here, and it's you can use it or not. So second tangent, you know. You know, five divided by nine equals second tangent. That'll give you your angle of 30. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a 29 and 61. Those are the two angles. Uh, you just write them down, blah, blah. So anyway, how do, I find, how do we find the run of this common rafter here, which seems to be the difficult part so far in the jack rafter runs? How do we find them, right? And you take this length times 0.55, that gives you this length. Let's do that, right? We can do, we can get the, we can do it to the run, or we can do the length itself, you know. 1.083 times 21 and three quarters. 1.083 is this, the line length ratio or secant of the 512 side. We 1.083 times 21.75, which is the run of the common raptor, and that equals 23.5. If we multiply that by the ratio of this, the short ratio of the sides, because we're trying to get the short run times 0.555 equals, and that'll give us 12.08, right? 12.08. That is to say, I take the 
Let me do that again. I'm gonna just take the run. 45 minus inch and a half divided in half is 21.75 times 0.555 equals, gives us 12.08. Then you multiply that by the one and a quarter times, times 1.25, baby, equals 15 inches, which is the hypotenuse of just more than, a little bit more than the hypotenuse of a 912. I like 912 pitches because the hypotenuse is a whole number, 15 inches. It's kind of rare, you know. So 512 is 13 inches. 912 is 15 inches, and you can imagine 1812 is 30 inches because it's two 912s, right? So anyway, that's it. 15 inches is the length of this one. So you would take that in order to get that run. In this case, you would take you just subtract 12 inches on either side, and the ridge length would be the difference on the plate lines. Cut that and so forth. How would you get these jack lengths? I have them drawn so that if this was 16 inches, let's say this was 12 inches, you could you could go, you could you could take 12 inches times 0.55 and then multiply that by the secant 1.25. And that would give you the difference between these two, right? You'd mark the difference, and the leftover would be the jack. How do you get the rafter lengths for this? The jack rafter lengths for this jack. I noticed my, these drawings are a little off. This line's on the wrong side. But anyway, from the short point, we can mark from where the ridge converges the valley over to the side of the jack rafter, multiply it. You'll notice the run on the ridge is shorter than, than the run for the jack rafter, so that we multiply that by 1.8. If this was five, and this is the shallow pitch, remember. If this was five inches, say, we five times 1.8 would give us the run, times the shallow pitch secant, 1.083, would give us the rafter length to the short side, and that would be the 61 degree angle cut, the plumb cut of a 512, which is 22 and a half degrees, the plumb cut. That's what that would be. Now remember this valley and this hip are the same length. The only difference is the side cuts at the bottom. Yeah, by way of the miter ruler all day long. <laughs>